You've recently divorced. This is no doubt an extremely distressing time for you. And I'm sure that making a new will is quite low down on the list of priorities, but it really should be a priority. In terms of divorce, that doesn't actually invalidate an existing will that you have, but what it does do is it invalidates your previous spouse's appointment of executor, the person who deals with your will, and any gift that you may have left to them in your will. My name is Jamie Howell, a will writer at ENG. I'm going to be speaking to you about the importance of making a will in the event of divorce. In the event of divorce, many people would think that it invalidates their will. The answer to this question is that it does not, but what it does do is it invalidates your previous spouse's appointment of executor, so the person who deals with your will, and any gift that you may have left to them in the will. Essentially, it makes your will surplus to requirements and it is crucial to put a new will in place that takes into account your current situation. If you had a will from when before you were married in the first place, this would not suddenly come into effect in the event of divorcing. Normally it is a case that a will is invalidated upon marriage. So the answer to this question is that if you have recently divorced, any will that you made before getting married would not come into force. So if you're recently divorced and you don't make a will, there could be serious implications in the long run. If something were to happen to you and there wasn't a valid will in place, there could be a risk. Obviously it depends on what the final provisions were of the divorce, that your previous spouse could have a claim on your estate. Furthermore, now that you're divorced, you know what you want to happen, but you have no control over what your previous spouse would have wanted. If you have children, it is crucial to make a will to ensure that you're taking steps to ensure that they're protected, regardless of what your previous spouse does, and that if there is the risk of your previous spouse having a claim on your estate, by making a will, we can look to ensure that the reasons for not including them are factored in. So, if you're recently divorced and you've entered a new relationship, surely high on the agenda is making sure that if something happens to you, your children are provided for. By making a new will, you can also look at making provisions for your existing partner in the event of something happening to you and wanting to protect them in the property, for example, but being mindful that you want to ensure that it's your children who eventually inherit everything that you've worked hard for. By achieving both of these objectives, the only way to do that is by having a legally valid will in place that looks to protect all of your interested parties. It may be a case that you're separated, but you're still married to your partner. Now, if you didn't make a will, if something were to happen to you, the first 270,000 pounds of your estate and any personal possessions would go to your partner, regardless of if you're separated or not. Any amount thereafter would go 50-50 between your spouse and the children. If you are still married to your partner, but are separated, you can look to put a will in place. It is a very, very risky area in terms of looking to exclude your spouse from the will, but it certainly can be done. But it has to be that it's a legally valid will that factors in who you're excluding and the reasons why as well. And again, you shouldn't be under any illusions that if something were to happen to you and you are still married to your spouse, that they could and likely would put a challenge in on your estate. If you're looking to start your will writing process or take advantage of our free will review, please click the link and both myself and the team at ENG Wills and Probate look forward to speaking with you.